Cheers. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to be um, giving you a beginner's guide to Facebook. Um, so I'll be uh, telling you how to set up your platform and um, how you can use it as well. So I'll be going through various bits and so yeah, let's crack on. So the power of the platform of Facebook. So I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about myself, uh, a bit of my background. So I'm based in Ipswich and I, as Mike said, I'm a marketer um, and I've been marketing at arts and charity based companies um, since I left university. So I worked at a, a publishing company called Boydell and Brewer uh, based in Woodbridge, being a market, marketing assistant there for about a year and a half. And then, as Mike said, I worked at Eastern Angles um, for nearly five years, heading up their uh, marketing um, and expanding the use of social media. Also went for a redesign of their website, which was a huge project, which was really good fun. Um, I'm particularly interested in that digital marketing side. So social media comes into that. Um, so we expanded our use of Facebook and videos in particular. So I really got um, my hands on experience of using Final Cut Pro. Um, and then uh, very recently, literally a year tomorrow, I, um, I, it'll be a year since I started at St. Elizabeth Hospice. So there I'm the senior marketing communications officer. Um, so covering uh, uh, marketing communications within the hospice itself, also for um, their retail shops. We've got shops across the region. Um, and uh, assisting with the fundraising events that happen as well. So it's a huge scope of um, different marketing and comms that I do in that job. So I've been working with social media professionally since I was at the University of Sheffield. Um, and that's where I kind of learned to use it more for business. Um, I was a publicity officer for um, the Singer Society, which was a choir. Um, and that was in 2012, that was when Twitter was starting to be used a lot more and particularly Facebook as well was really popular. And I myself have used Facebook um, since 2007 when I was 15. Um, so I've kind of grown up with it um, and seen it develop a lot. So let's crack on. So here's an overview of what we're gonna be talking about today. Um, so first of all, I'll give you a background into Facebook itself. Um, and we'll uh, talk about uh, how it was set up. So you can have a bit of context to understand where we are today with it. Then I'll be giving some more practical tips about setting up your profile. And that's from the very basics of signing up to customizing your profile and adding friends. Then we'll be looking at the terminology of Facebook. There's lots of various buzzwords that are used um, using the platform. So I'll be explaining what those mean and how you use them day to day. And that will then inform uh, how you use the platform yourself. And then we'll be looking at friends, fans, and community pages. Um, and that really will personalize how you use Facebook. And then most importantly, we're looking at security and privacy tools. So throughout the presentation, I'll be mentioning about privacy, um, but we'll be really delving into it towards the end of the presentation about how you can really make your profile uh, sensibly private um, and all the little tips and tricks. And then finally, I'll be going on to talk about um, how businesses use Facebook. Um, any business can join um, and it's a very, very powerful tool. Um, and one of those powerful tools that businesses can use is the power of Facebook adverts. And I think that'll be quite interesting. Um, I've added this in just as well for you to understand, even if you're not, you don't have a business or you're not gonna use a business page, it's useful to understand why you see a Facebook advert in your timeline. So we'll go through that. Helena, can I interrupt for a second? Absolutely, I go for it. I completely forgot to mention questions. Um, as ever, everyone, please, 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 um, if you have a question that you'd like to ask Helena, please feel free to unmute at any time uh, and just fire away. I know that Helena will be very happy to answer any questions at all during the evening. Thank you. That's all right, absolutely. Okay, so first of all, I thought I'd give you a nice potted history of Facebook. Um, so as some of you may or may not know, Facebook was founded by this guy. This guy is Mr. Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, you've probably seen this face around uh, the internet and perhaps at US Congress, which we'll go on to later. Um, so as of 2020, his net worth is ridiculous. It's $99.1 million. So he's just behind the likes of um, Jeff Bezos from uh, Amazon, Elon Musk and Bill Gates. Um, he actually makes, I found out he makes six and, what does he make? 
between six and twelve million dollars per day, uh, which results in an estimated yearly uh, yearly earning of more than three billion dollars, which is just absolutely mental. But much of that worth and wealth um, comes from Facebook's stock value. So that's a little bit about him. But let's talk about Facebook. So first of all, um, Facebook wasn't just uh, founded by Mark Zuckerberg. Um, it was actually founded by um, some of his college friends. So Eduardo Sovereign, Dustin Moskowitz and Chris Hughes. Um, and actually it wasn't called Facebook at all um, when it first started. Um, it all began at Harvard in 2003 and originally it was called Face Smash. And this was made through um, at Harvard University, they had like college profiles of each student. So Mark took these profiles and made face smash, which was, and then people had to rate on the attractiveness of two students either side. So it's kind of effectively like the first instance of a uh, hot or not.com if you ever heard about that. Um, so inevitably he got into trouble for it. Um, because he violated his the university policy um, so it was shut down after two days however um, there was a huge amount of popularity um, the people who went onto the site voted 22,000 times uh, on face smash so Mark Zuckerberg thought, thought okay you know what there's something in this this is going to be quite popular so straight after that kind of happened um, he then uh, registered the URL, the Facebook in January 2004. Um, so then after that, uh, it was only Harvard University students that could use the platform. Uh, but then it started to garner a bit of popularity. People heard about the Facebook and American universities um, such as Yale and um, Stanford uh, were able to then join the platform. And then by 2004, more than 250,000 students from 34 schools had signed up. But 2005 was a real pivotal year for, for Facebook. Um, they dropped the the, so it simply became Facebook, um, which is obviously the main name that they have now. Um, and people were able to upload unlimited images and tag people, which I'll go into about tagging a bit later on. And also in 2005, high school students and university students outside of the States um, were able to join the service. So that was quite a major pivotal point as more people started to use it. And by the year's end, it had 6 million monthly active users after that. Um, but then in 2006, it then moved on and uh, it became open to everyone. And by everyone, I mean over the age of 13 and with a valid email address. Um, and so I've gone fully global and it's kind of crazy to see how the membership grew. So just as an, as an example, uh, at the end of December 2006, there were 12 million users and then go to April 2007, 20 million. And then a couple of months by July, it was 30 million. And then by the near end of the year, it was 50 million. So it's just a bit crazy to see how big it got in such a short space of time. Um, and then also within like 2006 towards um, 2007, a lot of businesses also started to sign up to Facebook as well. And I'll go into businesses a bit later in the presentation. So during, um, so yeah, in um, 2010, it was valued at about $41 billion, which is a bit crazy. And it became the largest web company in the US sitting behind Google and Amazon. So it just shows how big the platform really is. Um, and um, as I've put there, they've acquired new assets. So Instagram, WhatsApp, which I'm sure quite a lot of you probably use and Portal. Um, if you're not familiar with Portal, you might have seen some television adverts um, for it. It's um, similar to Skype, Zoom. It's a platform um, where you can talk to your friends and family and it's all kind of connected up with Facebook. So uh, yeah, they've got quite a lot going on there. Uh, and today it is the biggest social media platform in the world. There are 2.7 billion users. So it is mega. So yeah, that's positive history. But I would highly recommend if you want to know more about the history of Facebook, please watch The Social Network. It is a fantastic film. 
It was Oscar nominated. It's directed by David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin. And it follows um, how Facebook was founded, but also the legal battle. There was a legal battle um, from some twins who claimed that they, like Mark Zuckerberg had stolen their idea that they created Facebook. Um, and it's also about how the co-founder was later squeezed out of the business. So if you want to know more about Facebook and its history, highly recommend The Social Network. I think it's on Netflix, so do check it out. So enough about the history, we've done all that now. Let's have a look at setting up a Facebook profile. So I'm literally doing the basics here. If you've never gone onto Facebook at all, these are the essential points that you'll need to know about how to set up, set up your profile. But first of all, why should you get Facebook? What is the incentive? Well, for a start, it's free. There's no cost involved at all. Even if you're a business, there's no cost. So it's very attractive in that sense. The best thing about it is that you can connect with friends and family who may live across the world. I myself have friends um, in Canada, uh, family in Seattle. So it's really lovely to be able to connect with them through Facebook rather than just the very occasional Christmas card um, for that year. You can share fun content and what you're doing. So that's really essentially what Facebook is. It's about sharing what's going on in your life, celebrations, funny content that you think others may like and share as well. You can show your likes and your dislikes and that will help with your timeline and what you see. We'll go on to timeline a bit later. Um, so really it's like a profile to show what, what you like, what you don't like, so people can get an idea a bit about you, but also Facebook can get an idea about you for Facebook adverts and things. But again, we'll come on to that later. Uh, there are fan pages and community groups that you can be a part of. It's a way to expand your business. If um, you've got your own business or a fan page and you really want to connect with other people, Facebook is probably the most essential platform, I'd say, uh, for you to use. Um, and you yourself can keep connected with businesses you're interested in too. So say there's a company that you love like Coca-Cola and you want to keep an eye on what they're doing or it might be for, for you guys, it might be Apple perhaps. So Apple Mac groups that might be on there. Um, so you can keep in touch with that as well. I thought it'd be quite, quite interesting as well just to share with you about the demographics that are using Facebook. The largest age group to be using it is 25 to 34 year olds, which I fall into. Um, and there's 11.2 million users of that. So I, I suspect that probably stems from like me as an example of using that growing up and it being the core platform that people have used but the least likely to use the site are those aged 13 to 17. And I'd say that's pretty evident when I've um, been working, when I was working at Eastern Angles, we had quite a few work experience students come through and I'd ask them what platforms they'd use. And they all said, I don't go on Facebook. I think maybe there was one person that did have it, but the reason, the reason why they didn't have it was because their parents were on it. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, you'll probably find that age group more on Instagram and platforms like TikTok, which I will explain a bit more next week if you're interested in that. Um, interestingly, um, users age 65 plus have increased from 4% to 9% um, in 2020. So it's kind of growing a bit. I think as more people want to stay connected, especially like potentially with the pandemic, more people are online wanting to stay connected and Facebook's a really great way to use that. Um, and interestingly, 52% of users are women and 48 are men. So there's a real even split um, with Facebook. Okay, so actually setting up, how do you do it? So if you're on a mobile or tablet, um, you can download the Facebook app. Simply go into your um, app store, type in Facebook and download the app. Alternatively, you can do it on desktop. So you could just type in facebook.com and it would pop up. So to create a new account, um, you simply click the button that says create a new account and sign up, sign up to Facebook. And you'll see that is the pop up um, image that will come up um, for you to enter your details. So the first name and surname, these will be what people will see. So don't put a kind of email username, put your actual name that you want to have displayed. Uh, then it gives you the option to have a mobile number or an email address. I would recommend an email address over a mobile number simply because of security, I think. Um, it'll be a lot better. I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to cough, excuse me, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> a 
apologies. <laughs> so yeah, I would um, use the email address, address, which would be safer. Um, a mobile number would probably be better if you were interested in getting your contacts and connecting with them, but you can easily do that through uh, the various networks, which I'll go through. And then um, you can set up your date of birth and your gender. But um, if you're worried about your date of birth, that can be changed again in the privacy settings, which I'll tell you about. So it's, it's really simple to sign up. With customizing your profile. So when you sign up, you get a profile. And uh, as you can see on the screenshots, this is kind of like the bare minimum of what you'd have. So where it says name, that would be your name, obviously. Um, and that circle there, that grayed out circle is where your profile picture is. And really it's just to represent you. And that can be an actual picture of you. I know other people have got different images where they don't have their face. Again, that might be a privacy um, tool that you can use if you want to stay a bit more private. Um, and I'll go into a bit more profile pictures in a second. Um, the cover photo is the background image. So you see that image of New York. I think it's New York there, looks like it. Um, that is a, a cover photo and it's basically just another picture to represent you. It could be a background image. It could be um, an image of friends, whatever you want. It's just a way of customizing your profile a bit more. Featured images are your top nine images. So you can kind of see just on, let me just hover the mouse. So just here and here, these are um, where you can put some of your favorite images on there. And again, I'll give you an example on the next slide. And then there's an about section, which is this bit here, which we'll be going into in a second. Um, and these are more details about you. So on the next slide, you're gonna see my profile. So on here, I've got my profile picture, which I've picked myself, um, I've chosen the picture. Um, and then the cover photo uh, is my family at Florida. And surprisingly, that was at the beginning of this year of 2020. Who knew it would get so different? Um, anywho, so. There are various options that you can do here. Um, one new feature is this add bio, which you can add to, but I, I wouldn't necessarily bother. Um, that might be something that you might want to put a little bit about yourself, but I think it's just trying to be a little bit like Twitter. If you're familiar with Twitter, you have a bio a little bit about you, uh, but on Facebook, it's people who are friends with you that should know you, I think. So what I'm going to talk about here is more about the about section, which you can just about see at the start here, but I've also screenshotted it here. So this is more about your job, where you're from, and you can see I've got some of my pictures there with my top nine pictures. So let's have a look at the about section because this is um, quite important in terms of how your privacy is set as well. So this screenshot is my about section. I'm just going to run through each bit and kind of explain to you the different icons and various bits of it. So this is just an overview of the information which will enter into the fields here. Um, so it tells us my job, which again will go into work and education, where I went to university, where I live, um, where I'm from, and uh, that I'm single apparently, but I've actually been in a relationship for five years. But these icons other thing that um, I wanted to talk to you about here. So this, if you ever see this icon on Facebook, that means that it's public worldwide information. So anyone can see that if they clicked on your profile, they could see that I was working at St. Elizabeth Hospice. This icon is your friends. So anyone who is in your friend circle can see that information, but not necessarily the public. And then the padlock, is only you. So you can see I've like hovered over there. So I think that's probably why I haven't changed this because this has only been me that's been seeing it and I've just not felt the need to update that. And equally my mobile phone number is only me. And you can change any of that. And I think the main thing to remember with all this information is you don't have to put it in. You don't have to say any of this. And if you want, you can make it just only you if you don't want anyone to know where you live or anything like that. So how do you change that? So you can go into the about section and you can add a workplace. Um, so as you can see here, I've added my previous jobs and that I work there currently. So then when you look back, it will say former on whatever job you've got. And then if you've got a new job, you just click add a workplace and then you could um, 
add your job title and quite often that particular company will probably have a Facebook page. That's why these icons have been populated because Sheffield Students Union have a page, Boyd Island Brewer do, East Angles and so on and so forth. I realised as well when I did this screenshot, apparently I'm still studying at the University of Sheffield, um, so I can, <laughs> I can uh, change that as well um, if I want to, and equally that I went to Northgate High School. And this, um, as I'll go on to a bit later, this is actually going to really help with um, searching for friends and adding friends and Facebook suggesting friends to you. Um, if they find people in similar jobs, perhaps they might say, oh, do you know this person and try and connect you. Again, notice the world friends options here, and you can just change that easily by going on these dot, dot, dots. Again, places lived, so you can add your city or hometown. It's very simple. Contact information. So as you can see on here, I've made that quite private because I don't want my mobile number out. Um, and I feel like if um, any of my friends wanted my mobile, they should probably, probably have it. Um, but if not, they can always message me on Facebook. And again, Messenger is another thing I'll go on to soon. Equally, my email address, I've, I've, I've made that only me as well. But you can add a website. So if you had your own site that you wanted to share with people, you could add that in here too. Um, so when people went on your profile, they could easily click onto that and add hello. a social. Oh, hello, yeah. You say you put in your mobile number and email, but you only allow yourself to see it. I can't see the point of that. I think it was way back when I probably signed up that I got asked to have my mobile number in there. Um, Do you yeah, think now question. that you would, it's worth putting it in and then making it private only to yourself? It seems a bit. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, okay, never mind. I think, no, no, no. I'm thinking because um, I do wonder if it might be for like a backup on privacy settings perhaps just or on security sorry like if you got an odd login then they might really? be able to contact you on that but yeah I think it harks back to an earlier time when I entered it okay um, but I reckon you could probably remove it surely, I'd have to have a look uh, but okay surely, but surely it's not uh, private to yourself because Facebook Google et al can now access that if they wanted to presumably I don't think they can. I think because that information is like private to you only. It would only be if like it became, if you made it public or to friends, that then they'd be able to access that. But I'll have a look into that though. Um, so that's good. Um, and then, yeah, so, and then on basic information, you can put your gender. Um, and then interesting as well um, is the date of birth and your year of birth. So I've made this available to my friends um, and some people, most people I know, um, do keep their date of birth and year of birth in there, um, mainly because on Facebook you can wish each other a happy birthday. So it gives you a reminder that it's somebody's birthday. I mean, it's a good way to test if your friends actually know when your birthday is by making that only you and then waiting on your birthday to check if they actually wish you a happy birthday or not. So that's another thing that you can make private. Um, some people I know um, make their date of birth um, public to friends, but then they make the year of birth private um, for their age. Again, family and relationships. Um, with relationships, uh, you might have heard of a relationship status. That was something that was quite big uh, from like 2007 to still to now, I guess. Um, you might have heard the term Facebook official. Uh, people use that if they go into a relationship and make it Facebook official on Facebook and say that they're in a relationship together. Um, but uh, most people use it, um, especially if they get engaged or get married um, to kind of celebrate. But um, on here, as you can see, you can change the privacy of that. Again, like I said before, you don't have to put this information in. You don't have to do that at all. Um, and down here are like fem family members. This was a function that came in quite a while ago and I've, I've not updated it at all, to be honest. Um, and this just shows like who's in your family. I'm not entirely sure why Facebook added it in, whether it's like a particular contact group that you can get in touch with, but it was a feature I'd say about maybe seven years ago that they added. Um, but yeah, again, you don't need to necessarily have that in there. 
then these are details about you as you can see i haven't filled any of these in but you can always add them in if you wish so about you some details about yourself um and that could be that short bio description we talked about earlier name pronoun uh, pronunciation which i kind of think if you're friends with each other you should probably know how to pronounce their name uh, but you can always add that in and nicknames as well your favorite quotes and interestingly they had this like about learning to become a, a blood donor on facebook i haven't investigated that but it's quite interesting them adding these little extras in and then life events you might have seen these pop up occasionally so life events are any like major changes to your profile major changes to your life as you can see most of mine is just leaving jobs and starting new jobs um, other people might put um, engagements or getting married um, and these will pop up on your timeline and again i'll talk about timelines in a bit so let's go on to that uh, so yeah, so that's how you kind of personalise your about section. And that's quite important for then, like I say, with adding friends. So with adding friends, uh, Facebook will automatically suggest friends for you. So um, as you can see, I've put in um, my... Um, on, that, yep. on that Facebook automatically suggesting friends, yep. is there any way we can dump all them creatures that come up? Where, where you can get rid of them. Yeah, who you never know in your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, when it comes up, I'll, sh I'll show you an example in a bit. Um, it will have like a section of them and you can it will say add as a friend or you can click ignore. And if you click ignore, then it will it will remove it and it will know that you, you don't want to be friends with that particular person and that they don't mean anything to you. So that's a quick way to get rid of it. Um, so yeah, uh, your friends can be like based on location. So if they're in Ipswich, perhaps school, job, university, and quite often, more than not, it will be through mutual friends. So say I'm friends with my own friends with Mike on Facebook, and then one of you might pop up on my feed if you're friends with him. And it might say, oh, do you know this person? Um, and then it might be that I do and I'll go, oh, I actually know them. I'll add them. As you and so like with that, as you add more friends, you'll see if you have mutual friends before adding it. That's quite a useful feature just to also verify that you're um, adding the correct person um, and that they're valid on Facebook as well. Um, so that's really useful. Can you actually stop Facebook suggesting friends altogether because it becomes a bit of a nuisance? It does. I don't think you can, but um, I know that you can just click. It's as simple as clicking X and ignore. I think it's just um, a general feature that they just keep in there, I'm afraid. Mm. Yeah, it, is, it can be quite annoying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks. That's all right. Do these people know you've rejected them? No, no, they don't. And that's the kind of like beauty of it. You don't have to, um, you don't have to worry about insulting anybody. Um, equally, um, I'll come on to about um, removing friends as well, um, that you won't ever get a notification that someone's removed you. Um, so yeah, you don't have to worry about insulting anybody. Um, so another way that you can um, add friends is by searching for names in the search bar. I'll be showing you how to do this in a second on screenshots. Um, so there's a search bar tool on Facebook. So say you wanted to find a long lost friend from a school, you could type in their name and then you'd be able to filter them down to people and you'd be able to see um, if they're on there. Um, doo -doo -doo. So yeah, when you're adding a person, um, you don't just have to click add as a friend or ignore. You can just double check that you're um, adding the correct person by clicking on their name and it will go through to their profile. And this is where you can see if you're adding the correct person or not. Um, you'll be able to, depending on their privacy settings, um, most often than not, um, you'll be able to see their profile pictures and cover photos. Um, those, those are mainly the essential information if they've got the tightest um, privacy um, settings on their profile. Um, you can request an ad and wait for it to be accepted. So when you click add a friend, um, you'll then have to wait and then you'll get a notification once it's been accepted and you'll be able to access that person's profile um, and see all their posts. And equally, yeah, you'll get a notification. Um, yeah, I've said that, cool, brilliant. Okay, so on here, I've given an example of me searching for a friend. So I've put John Smith as a generic name. So this is on the toolbar. 
up here um, on the search bar here and you can type in a name. If you wanted to, you could filter it. So I could have clicked on people and that would have brought up this list of people. And as you can see, like there's some mutual friends that I've got here. So I could then click on them and just make double check um, that they were the correct person. If I was like, oh yeah, that's definitely someone I know, I would click on this button. But equally, you can go on their profile and there'll be an add it as a friend button on there too. How to unfriend somebody if you're not in touch with them anymore or say um, you've got the wrong person, perhaps um, you can go to the person's profile. If you click on the person icon on the right hand side, which is just here, um, this icon just there, and then you can click unfriend. Um, they won't be notified if you unfriend them, so you don't have to worry about insulting them. Um, and they will only notice if they try and access your profile and they won't be able to access it. Unfollow whilst I'm here. There's, a, there's oh. also a way that you can um, block their post uh, for um, like 30 days or something like that. Are you going to show that? Uh, yeah, I can show you that. Yeah, I'll show that at the end. I'll make a note to do that as well. But yeah, you're right. You can uh, you can block certain posts or um, the way to do that, actually, um, if you wanted to never see something on somebody's feed, if you weren't liking what they were posting, but you didn't want to necessarily unfriend them, that would be where you'd click unfollow. So unfollow would mean that you, you won't get any of like their content coming through. So it's kind of a softer way of blocking them um, as well. So. So messenger. I know also oh, yeah. in my in my business when I was when I was working, I had a lot of clients that wanted to be friends, and I really didn't want to do that, so mm -hmm. I reluctantly did. But then I went in and changed a setting, so they never saw any of my posts. All they would ever just see is my basic information. Yeah, exactly, and that's the beauty of thing of Facebook is it can be very tailored to particular people if you want it to be. Um, so yeah, that's a good way of doing it really. So as you can see on here, there's like a button that says message and message is messenger in Facebook and messenger is Facebook's live chat. If you're on a mobile or a tablet, that is very much a separate app and the separate app is called messenger. So if you put in messenger or Facebook messenger into your um, Google play or app store, um, it will be in there and you just download it and it's kind of similar to WhatsApp. It's not as user friendly, but um, it's a way that you can instantly message your friends. And you can message your friends by clicking on their particular profile like we saw with that button. This example here is from a business, but it's the same model. You'd click on here and then a pop up um, message chat would come up and you can just chat away like you normally would uh, with any online chat system. And like I say, you can also message businesses as well. So, I mean, the other day I messaged a business myself. Um, there's a new restaurant that opened um, uh, down at Woodbridge called The Boat House and they were doing takeaway, but I wasn't sure what time they were open. So I just went on their profile, I clicked message and I just asked them what time they were open and they quickly got back to me. So it's quite a good way of having a direct communication with a particular business. Is Messenger on Facebook encrypted? I think it is. I think it is. Um, and yeah, and then with uh, messaging, um, depending on the person's settings, uh, you can message those who aren't your friends, but the other person will have to say if they're happy to accept a message from you. So I did this the other day, actually. Um, I messaged a friend of a friend uh, for like a birthday message. And I just, I was able to go onto their profile, but message them, I'm not friends with them. And I just explained who I was and they, they'd get a notification saying, do you want to accept this or not? Um, similar how you have it on WhatsApp. If you've ever had a message from a contact you don't know on WhatsApp, it will kind of prefix with a message to say, do you want to accept this or not? Um, but yeah, it's a good way of like, particularly for businesses doing direct messaging to them. I'd say most people, particularly of my age um, and with other groups, don't use Messenger so much. It used to be quite popular. Uh, but with WhatsApp, that's a lot easier. It's much more mobile friendly. It's easier to share content and it's easier to keep updated with notifications as well. Messenger can be a bit clunky, um, I think, um, but it is quite a useful tool to have. 
um, and liking pages. So liking by liking pages, you'll see um, interesting content from your favorite brands, restaurants, celebrities, news outlets, and interests. Um, so yeah, pages are just your, like a fan page basically. Um, so I thought it'd be quite interesting just to see the top pages in the UK, are mainly um, artists and football teams, as you've got Man United, like the biggest page, Adele, Jason Statham, David Beckham, Unilad, which is um, a quite a good Facebook page um, if you want to keep in touch with viral content. They often share um, really interesting videos um, that often go huge and viral. Um, and then there's Man City, Beatles, Coldplay, Arsenal, One Direction, you name it, there's pretty much a page for everything. If you're interested in it, um, you'll be able to find it. So. Um, I'll be showing you a bit more on pages a bit later. Um, but also it's worth noting, you can create your own page too. If there's something you're passionate about or if you've got a business, you're able to create your own page too and it's free. Um, so yeah, I will chat more about pages uh, very shortly. So uh, this- Sorry, is just, to, just to yes. clarify, um, what you've been talking about up to now, where yes. you individual person, that's not a page. In, no, in so definition. yeah, um, so yeah, in uh, terms of the terminology, um, for your own personal account, you'll have a profile, so it'll be your profile page, and then on a then there'll be a page that will be more of a fan page, so it's right. more pro profiles personal to you, page is a more like fan page, external group, yeah, more yeah. public, yeah, okay. Yeah. No Thanks. problem. That's no problem. So on this example, I'm a massive fan of the Great British Bake Off. I watched final last night. It was great. I won't give you any spoilers in the, in case yeah. you haven't seen it. Um, so don't worry. Um, so with this, really, really simple. Again, you go on the search bar. This is a quite a handy tool. And you can type in anything here, like your favourite football team, favourite TV programme, whatever. So I put in the Great British Bake Off. And then I filtered it. I filtered it to pages because I don't want people, I don't want photos or other content here. I just want to find the page. And this is all the results that came up. They're just the top uh, five there. So the top one is the verified page. And I know that because of this blue tick here. But also if I wanted to, if I wanted to find an official verified page, I could click the filter here and just swipe that along. And then that would tell me the official page. And not quite often you can tell by the number of likes. So as you can see, there's 1.2 million people that like that, obviously. And lots of my friends do. Um, but below that, are, these are other pages created by other people. So you'll kind of know from the rankings whether you're liking an official page or not. So it's a quick way to um, get content that you're interested in, but also to show other people what, like, what your likes are, basically and kind of, again, personalize your page a bit more, your profile page is. So then I've just switched over here to, this is what um, the page looks like um, for um, the Great British Bake Off. You'll see, as I'll show a bit later as well, it's quite similar to a personal profile page in terms of how it looks. Um, and you can engage with these pieces as well. So as you can see, I liked this particular page that uh, they posted. Um, yesterday. Um, so it's a way that they can create content and connect with their supporters. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a way of sharing content and things going viral as well. So I'm going to delve into a little bit about joining groups. So groups differ to pages. So think of a page as like your fan page um, of like your favourite uh, football team. But a group is more community based and tends to be private. So say you've got yeah your favorite football teams like man united that's the fan page you're a part of but then you might have um like a 25 to 30 uh man united um like group that meets at the pub or something to discuss football and you want to have your own uh community group or something like that to chat about it um that would be different um quite often local groups um are from your particular area and it's kind of like your village shop having a notice board. That's quite a, a lot of them. Um, that's a lot of what uh, groups are used for. So for example, for me, where I live, we have a private group for the residents around here. Um, so that's quite useful. We put in notices about um, 
uh, if there's been anything uh, damaged at all, or if people have got things to sell that they're looking for, or if people are recommending a plumber. Um, it's quite it's quite good for like general notices um, and like neighbourhood watch really. Um, some groups have approval needed by admin when you join, so you might search for a group. Again, I'll show you how you do that. Um, and then when you want to be added into it, there'll be an admin within that who may have to approve you are able to join the group. So you're not going to be trolling people or you're not a valid user. Um, so yeah, as I say, as with pages, you go in the search bar to find your community group you're looking to find. So again, I used a search bar here and I typed in Ipswich to see what local groups there are and I filtered down to groups. As you can see here, there's some more filters where you can go into like city and area, but for this case, I just chose groups. And it came up with a few that I'm already a part of. So I'm part of these three groups here. Um, and these are, I think this one's kind of a public one that you can join. I think this one too, but this one's a more of a private one. So you can click onto the group and then there'll be a kind of privacy setting on it potentially, where you might not be able to see content, but then you can be added to the group and then you'd be able to see notices, that kind of thing. So it might be that I'd like to go on Ipswich, talk about anything group. So it's a group where you talk about anything to do with Ipswich. Um, so it's just extra content to be able to connect with people. And again, you can create your own group as well. So, excuse me, it's a bit more private. So it might be that potentially with this group, you might want to put a group together and you could put on notices that are private to the Mac user group, uh, rather than doing a page which is much more public facing. Um, this is much more community based. Any questions on groups at all? Because I realise that's kind of, they're quite similar to pages, but a bit complicated. No? Okay. I'm going to go into Facebook terminology. So we've touched on a few things already, but um, I'm going to go into a bit more detail about certain terms. So I'm hoping this will help um, with uh, how you use Facebook and if you're new to it as well for the first time. So a timeline. Timeline is your personal feed. So you'll find your timeline on your personal profile page. It used to be called your wall back in the day. And if you kind of think of it like a wall, it's quite useful. So if you think about when you were, say you were a teenager and on your wall you had like posters of things you liked, that could be your fan pages or lovely quotes that you like or things that you would want to share, photographs with friends and family. That's kind of what the wall was. So in a sense, your timeline uh, fits into that as well. It's just changed the name. So on your timeline, any posts that you make and share will appear here. So if you share something and you're like, oh, I'd quite like to go back and have a look at that, you can go back onto your profile and go onto your timeline. Other people can post on your timeline. In particular, um, most people use this for happy birthdays. Um, so they'll get a notification that it's your birthday and they can post on your timeline to wish you happy returns. Um, I don't know many other people that use this as much anymore because it used to be if you wanted to get in contact with a friend, you'd have to post on their wall and they'd post back on your wall, whereas now it's a bit easier to have a flow of conversation. So if you've been tagged in any posts, and I'll come on to tagging in a second, a, um, a post with a photo, a video, or a status post, it will appear on your timeline. But then also um, when somebody posts um, on like a page, for instance, so you remember back to that um, Great British Bake Off um, post, I could comment on there and I could tag somebody, but that it wouldn't appear on their timeline. So if you're tagged in a comment on the post, it won't appear on your timeline. You'll just get a notification about it. I'll show an example of this um, in a second. Um, it's also useful to know that you can remove posts on your timeline uh, by clicking hide from timeline. So you can kind of edit what other people see. Um, so if you don't want something on there, you can get rid of it. So this is my timeline. Um, so this is quite recent. So I've, I've picked these two screenshots, they're two separate ones here, um, just to kind of show you the variety of posts um, and I'll come on to tagging in my next slide. So this links quite nicely. So this is my profile. We've seen like the about here and the, um, excuse me, and the nine pictures that I had there. So on here, I shared some content from Strictly Come Dancing. I shared a video and I put it within a status and that appeared on my timeline. 
down here, you'll see that I got tagged in a post. Like I said, if you get tagged, it will appear on your timeline. And I got tagged here and it was a status with the pictures. So I got tagged on that, that's why that's in my timeline. On here, I tagged in a location and that appears there with um, other people on there. And this is a post with like a photograph and a status as well. So there's a variety of different content that will appear on your timeline. But um, it's quite interesting when other people are tagged on there. Can I um, ask a question about timelines? Yes, absolutely. When I log into my account sometimes, like yesterday, yep. on my timeline was this thing that said, this video is for you. And that was a video of some dopey dog slipping down the ice. Now, who sends them and how do I stop them? OK, so that would have appeared on your news feed rather than your timeline. Um, so your news feed, it, uh, yeah, I, I find them quite annoying too. They, I'd imagine there was a title that said suggested for you at the top, potentially. Um, yes, is what they always say. Yeah, yeah. So quite often it will be if you've watched a particular video or if you um, like particular content or if a friend of a friend um, in your circle has liked particular content, it can appear in your feed. It's a weird algorithm that um, Facebook has. And believe me, I wish I could get rid of it too. But um, I've, it's something I've noticed more, I'd say actually in the last month that it's been happening. Um, but yeah, it, it stems from other people, um, other friends liking content and then suggesting that like, you might like that too. Um, I'm not sure if you can get rid of it or not. If we've got time at the end of this, I'll show you my timeline because I've probably got uh, my newsfeed, sorry, because um, uh, I have similar videos as well. We can have a look if we can get rid of that. OK, so this is kind of what the timeline looks like. You can actually go back in time and have a look at a particular um, uh, time if you want. Um, I'll show you that later, perhaps, uh, where you can go to a particular year if you wanted to look back at your content. But yeah, anything you post will appear here. So it's kind of like your saved timeline. So let's go on to tagging, because I've mentioned tagging loads. And if you're not familiar with tagging, you must be thinking, what on earth am I going on about? So tagging happens with photos videos, statuses, and comments. So when you tag someone, you create a link to their profile. And when you get tagged, you receive a notification. So if we kind of just go back, you'll see that with this post, my name's in blue and that would hyperlink then to my profile. And if someone's a friend of mine, it will go to my profile and they can see everything. Excuse me, sorry. Um, but if they haven't, then it would just show um, the private page I have for when um, new people join. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cough again. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, so. Uh, you can tag a friend in a picture so it appears on their timeline so when you post you can tag it i'll show you how to do that in a second um you can tag friends in statuses and posts by typing their name so you might have heard people saying at me or um you can tag me by adding me um that is a, a function you can use um to tag your friends i'll show you again how to do that um you can check into a location or a business so as you can see back on this previous slide hopefully it will there we go. Um, you can see that I tagged in to uh, Gatwick Airport here, and that was a tag, and I tagged my friends into it too. Or you can tag someone into a comment of a post, like I mentioned before, and you can use the same app process. So I will go into a bit more about that. But it's um, really uh, interesting to know that you may have priv uh, privacy settings where you can approve a tag before it's published. I'll show you that uh, in a bit. Um, you can always remove tags. So if you get tagged in something, you can always remove it. And you can always add back onto, I think as well, depending on the settings of that person's profile. Um, and there's quite often now an option to click tag friends on posts as well. So I'll show you an example. So on here, this is the cover photo that I had. If I wanted to tag the people in it and for it to appear on their timeline, I can click this, which is an actual tag. I click that and then I just click the faces of the people and then I could type their name and that they would appear and I can um, add them with a tag and they'd get a notification and that would appear on their timeline. Uh, that's essentially how you do it with photographs. Um, 
and it's a good way for people to share content and make sure that it's on their profile you might hear people say tag me um so yeah this is how you would um tag if you were just creating a status post or um any other kind of uh written post so I'm clearly having the best time with Mike Kwasniak. So what I did with this was I just typed at, and when you type at, it then comes up with a list of your friends. And as you type, it will then start to search uh, for the, your friends. So I started obviously to type Mike. Um, the top two people are actual friends of mine. The bottom three aren't, I'm afraid I'm not friends with Mike Tyson. Um, but uh, yeah, so you you'll come up with your friends first um basically so you have to be careful when you um click on it that you're clicking the right tag um equally another way to do that is to click on this blue tag friends uh, button here that's another way you can tag someone so again i clicked on that a pop out um after that came up and you can search for your friend and you can just type, start to type in their name and they'll appear on there so that's another way you can do it um, again, checking in, like I mentioned before, that little um, location sign, you can click that and check in. So let's say you're going to a theatre show and you really want to share that oh, I'm at the Ipswich Regent Theatre seeing a musical called Waitress. So you'd check in and then it will come up with a list of locations. Now, if you're doing it from a mobile, it might be that you have your location settings on and then Facebook will automatically know that you're at Ipswich Regent. Um, you can turn that off with your location settings and then you could just type in where you're going, where you're at, if you'd rather not have that. It's quite a useful function to have if you just want to be quick to say you're here and watching a play. Um, but it's up to you with those location settings on your phone in particular, um, whether you use that or not. Um, but yeah, that's quite a fun one to do. So that's tagging in a nutshell. Um, so we've just touched a little bit on the newsfeed. Newsfeed is a little bit different. You get to see what everyone else is saying and doing. Um, so any posts you've made, you'll see here, but mainly it will be what you would, like, what your friends have been doing. Um, so you'll be able to see your friends posts. You'll be able to see any pages you like will post here. So all those Bake Off posts, they would have appeared in my newsfeed. Um, and also this is where you'll see Facebook adverts. Um, the posts that you see first are often influenced by your connections and activities. So if you like a lot um, with one of your friends, it might be that, that those particular kind of posts will appear first over a friend that maybe you don't interact with so much. Equally, if a page post is doing really, really well and lots of people are interacting with it, that will probably push up on your newsfeed as well. Um, kind of like Google rankings, I guess. Um, so yeah, the number of comments, likes and reactions a post receives and what kind of story it is will make it more likely to appear higher in your feed. So this is my newsfeed at the weekend. As you can see, the newsfeed is quite mobile friendly. They again changed it about a year or two ago on desktop and it, it's a bit more mobile-esque. Anyway, as you can see, when I went on, this was the first post this is from my, my cousin um, who I interact with quite a bit. So she appeared first there. You also see this is where I can find out what whose birthday is it coming up, and as I can see, oh, like Hannah's birthday's today, so I could click on her profile and wish her a happy birthday. This is also where you can see your notifications. You can always see your notifications from your profile as well, uh, but that bell is the notification. So if you ever get um, a friend trying to add you, um, someone liking your post, anything like that, it will appear on that bell. So it's good to keep up to date on that. You can also post from here as well. So if you wanted to post a photo um, of what you're up to, you can go onto your newsfeed and do it from here rather than going onto your profile, for instance. If we get time at the end, I'll talk about this here, but we'll probably touch on these stories next week and rooms. But this is also where you can start to see some Facebook advertising popping up. It will pop up on the side, but also a little bit further down um, as well. So this is a bit more of a, a view. And as you can see, these are some of the groups. And then this is also where you'll see uh, some of the suggested friends as well. I think it's on mobile that it has the ignore button, but equally you can see there's an X here and you can just click that and it'll get rid of it. Reactions, they're quite fun. So it's interacting with posts. You can interact with any post, whether it's a status, a video, a photo, an advert, um, by any fran a friend or fan page. And these are the emojis they've got. And the most recent one is the care emoji. And this came around from the coronavirus pandemic when people were 
wanting to show that they were caring and they were like feeling all fuzzy from all the wonderful uh, fundraising and um, keeping morale up as well during the pandemic. So as you can see here, I'm kind of strictly from dancing and I've just hovered, what you do is you just hover over the like button and you'll see the reactions here and they're animated and then you can click the one that you want to then post with. If you've liked something and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have liked that, you can just um, click the button again and it'll unlike it. Okay, so a real key thing, security and privacy. I'm gonna try and do this in a nice nutshell for you. Uh, and hopefully not go too over time. Okay, first of all, we're gonna look at how you change your settings because this is really important. So um, when you go onto your profile, but also onto that news feed, um, next to that bell that I just talked about is an arrow and on here, you'll be able to go to your settings and privacy. And then it's broken down into these settings. So as you can see, you can change your language. This might be, is it John who asked me about newsfeed preferences? This might potentially be where you could probably change those suggested posts. I'm not sure, I'll have to check that. So when you go on to settings, you can change your name. Um, it's important to know that I, for me, I know for my friends who are teachers, they don't have their full name on there, um, mainly for their privacy, uh, for safeguarding as well. So if you were a teacher, I know most people do like a middle name. So they'll have their first actual first name and then have a middle name. So like my friend Anna has Anna Louise. Um, so that's another way that you can help with your privacy if you've got an occupation where you don't want people to be searching for you. Um, so you can change your name here, you can change your email address. And interestingly, and kind of morbidly, uh, they've got this new setting and it's about your legacy contact because there are so many users on Facebook, um, obviously, people are going to die and um, some people use Facebook pages as like tribute pages or it might be that you want the complete removal of your account you don't want anyone to use it after you pass away it's a bit morbid but I was like I was quite interested in it. I thought that was quite interesting or you can have your whole account deleted after you pass away but um, again like I said you don't have to enter that in if you're interested you can so security and login um, really usefully you can be notified if a new device logs into your account so as you can see here this is a screenshot i did um, and i can see where i logged in and i could then have a look at more uh, logins as well and if i saw anything dodgy then it, that might be an appropriate time to like change my password as well um there's a two-factor author author oh, authentication uh facebook um notice that you'll get um, if you get an attempt from an unknown device um so I know before, um, I've had it before where I had to uh, verify myself and I had to do it by, um, I had to look at some pictures and I had to identify my friends because uh, that's quite a difficult thing to do if people don't, aren't who they say they are. Um, and then another thing you can do now is you can choose three to five friends as an emergency contact if you get locked out of your account. So then you can go through to them and chat with them and get you logged back in. So there's various layers they have to making sure that they've got the right person logged in. So how can people find you? Hey, can is... I just ask oh, a question? Hello. You... Yes, absolutely. Um, I've had a notification on one occasion where, whereby my account was hacked. Yep. And um, I, I kind of failed to see any benefit from hacking my account. Or well, I've had friends who've had their um, accounts hacked you change your password, etc. Yeah. What possible benefit can it be for them, for anybody? Perhaps I'm being a bit naive here. I mean, it might be personal information that they might want to find out, but quite often the hacking that I've only come across myself has been when um, people have used the messenger button and given a link for people to, um, to click on and they send it to like all friends, all contacts. So it's a way of kind of coming in and like spreading a message or spreading a link or uh, virus to lots of people that's essentially from my point of view what i've found when i've seen it happen like that um but yeah it's an interesting one with it's yeah it's not a nice one <laughs> no not at all um yeah but yeah always changing your passwords always good and making sure that it's really secure i'm sure all of you are really super aware of how to how to make your password very secure phrases are good um, and obviously a combination of symbols as well as letters and uh, numbers thank you 
no problem. Um, so to change how people can find you, go to your settings and then go to privacy. And then underneath there, you can see what, um, what people can find out about you. So do you remember at the beginning, I showed you that kind of world, friends and only me? This kind of links into that. So you can change who, sent, who can um, give you a friend request. So I've selected everyone because, you know, I might not be friends with them or friends of friends. Um, so I want anyone, anyone can add me, but I think if you chose to like not have that, only you could add people uh, who can see your friends list. So if you had a really sensitive like contact list and you're like, I don't want other people to know that I'm friends with this person or um, like high profile people potentially, you can hide that. You can make that completely private and for only you to have a look at. So no one can search that. Um, who can look at you? Hello. Yes. Uh, this is Jim Korska. Uh, occasionally I'll get friend requests from people who are already friends, which I assume their account has been hacked in some way. Yeah, I've had but, that before. Yeah. Well, why, why would that happen? I, I, I think it happens so, because so of... I'll, I'll, oh, yeah, sorry. I'll open up my I'll open up my homepage and my notifications and I'll say Mr. or Miss X has sent you a friend request and I'll go to Messenger and I will tell those people I've gotten this friend request and you're already a friend, you maybe have been hacked. But I don't understand what the advantage is of sending out a new friend request if someone has hacked their page. Yeah, I think that comes from like the hacker themselves. I've had that before with um, like my cousin had that. Um, so it really, they normally like take the profile picture that they recently had and their particular name. Again, once you add them as a friend, it would be like to spam you and send links and things like that. But what you did is correct. So I'd say you'd have to like make sure you message um, your particular contacts and let them know that that has happened. And then you can report it. You can report those profiles. So um, instead of, you wouldn't add them as a friend, but you can go on the dot, 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 and you can be like report user, and then you can say that it's spam as well. So it's worth investigating that um, if you ever come across something like that, but always in the first instance, don't uh, accept it if you know that they've got another profile, double check. Also use it, making sure that you can have a look at those mutual friends as well. That's a really useful tool to make sure it's authentic. But yeah, I'd get in contact with that particular person first tell them about it and then um, you can select to block that account or report it as spam. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, so that's, that's quite a simple way of how you can um, adapt your profile to how people can find you on there. Um, and then we were just talking about tagging. So I said that you can um, review tags um, and you can also limit how people view pictures of you as well. So on here, it's like viewing and sharing. Who can post in your profile? I've got my friends on there. Um, or if I wanted to, I'd be like, no, no, none of my friends can post on there. That's absolutely fine. Uh, who can see a post on your profile as friends as well. Um, and that kind of makes sense really for the kind of platform that this is. You want to be connected with your friends. Um, so with tagging, who can see posts that are tagged on your profile? So I, I've got my friends that can see it. There's an, I think there's another option where it's friends of friends. So if I wasn't friends with that particular person, if they clicked on my profile, would, would they see uh, my photos? No, they wouldn't in this case. Um, and yeah, and on the bottom there about reviewing, review posts that you're tagged in before a post appears on your profile. I've turned that off, but you could turn that on if you were cautious about things that you were tagged in and you didn't want everybody to see it. You'd get a notification on that bell saying, um, this person's tagged you in your photo, review the tag and you can review it. And then you can go, yeah, I want that on my profile. I want that tagged for me, tick that, or you can reject it. So it's quite a good way of controlling how you're being uh, like used on different profiles basically. So it's, it's quite clear and easy to use. You just simply go on the edit button to change that. This is the most useful tool. I highly re recommend this to every single one of you that has Facebook please use this tool. I use it quite a bit just to make sure that the privacy settings are the privacy settings I want for people who are landing on my profile. So this is seeing what the public sees. Um, so this is the view ads tool. Um, so it's just a useful way to see what your profile looks to the public. 
So you just go to your profile page and you click on this icon, which is just literally an eye that says view as. And when you click on that, as you can see on the top here, hopefully you can read that. It says this content on your profile is public. So this is the view if someone had searched my name and clicked on my profile. So I can see what the public sees when they go on my profile. So at the moment, I've got my settings that I've got my about on there. I could change that if I wanted to. Uh, I've got my profile pictures on there. I don't have my tagged photos, although you can see these photos here. These are my profile pictures. They're not my tagged photos. So only the pictures that I've uploaded here and on my cover photos, people will see. Um, so that's such a useful tool, honestly. I, I really recommend that. It's just on that eye there. Uh, there used to be a way that you could actually even view uh, what a specific person sees, but it looks like they've got rid of that recently. Um, so this is just the public view. Um, if you need more help on any security questions, highly recommend going to the Help Center. They have so many queries and privacy and security questions that I might not have covered for you tonight. Um, so it's really simple. You just go back onto that arrow that we were on earlier help and support and go to your help center. And there's a whole bunch of questions on there. I don't wanna go over time, so I'll quickly touch on business for Facebook. So as you can see, there are lots of Facebook pages that pop up nowadays. Um, any business can go on here, as you can see, Gripswich Town, and you can identify um, pages in different categories and that will make it easier for people to find you and for you to maybe see related content. So obviously that stadium arena sports venue i've liked applaud coffee they're a local coffee shop in ipswich and i'm a big fan of theater so i'm part of the performance art and theater um what's on stage which is a news um kind of page as you can see on each page as well it's quite similar to a timeline that you would have had on your own profile excuse me and um there's a different call to action on each of these profiles as well which is quite interesting so for Ipswich, it's shop now, which obviously goes to the online shop where they want to direct their traffic. For what's on stage, they're a new site. So their um, call to action will be a sign up page to probably get emails from them. And for Applaud Coffee, they are an independent coffee shop. So they're not necessarily going to have a lot of online buying products, uh, but they have got gift cards on sale. So quite often you'll have a different call to action depending on what the business is. Um, it's also worth mentioning you can see that message button again, you can see it here. And actually on this one for Applaud Coffee, um, when I clicked on the profile, it automatically popped up the messenger. And this is kind of what the pop-up messenger looks like here. Um, and so you could ask them any question there and you can just minimize it here if you don't want to talk to them. So yeah, you can see there's lots of different ways that you can use a business. Advantages are, you can speak directly with an audience who are interested in your business. So you've already got a fan base there, but also potential new customers. They might share the content that then their friends will see. And they might have never come across that business before and go, actually, that looks really cool. My friend likes it. OK, I want to get involved, too. If you're a business, you have the ability to advertise on Facebook and be very, very targeted, which I'll go into very shortly. Um, you will build a digital presence and the following. It's really low cost. It's free to have a business page. And um, Facebook advertising is really cheap as well. And it's trackable. It's trackable numbers and insights. So on the left here, you can see this is from a page that I run uh, at work. Um, and I can see the insights that all our numbers are up for people engaging and we've got more likes on our page. Um, so it's a really great trackable way of um, reaching an audience and communicating with them. One of the other advantages if you've got a business is you can schedule posts. So it's not something you can do if you've got your own personal profile. You can't schedule a post if you're just posting yourself, but you can if you're a business. So on here, you're getting an exclusive insight into the St. Elizabeth Hospice schedule page. And um, so here you just you can create a post with an image and then you can uh, post at a particular time, particular day. So you don't have to be there every time to click post. So you can schedule content over a weekend, which is highly useful if you're not working that amount of time, but also um, uh, it's useful for events and things like that in the lead up and just making sure you've got regular content. The more content you put into a page, the better engagement, the better ranked it will be um, and the more people it will reach. What, what content works well? Opening up questions to followers, engaging them in the conversation. Video and photo content will always get more engagement 
and videos. If you're gonna have a video on a page, upload it directly to Facebook. Don't link it to YouTube. It won't get as much engagement. With Facebook, if you upload directly, you'll get a lot more people watching it. And you can get auto-generated subtitles as well, which more people are doing now because uh, videos automatically play on, on mute um, and subtitles are really um, good for access as well for people who are hard of hearing. Um, knowing what time to post is useful as well. Um, so as you can see with the schedule, uh, there are actually particular times a day that are meant to be quite good, 1 p.m. till 3 p.m. during the week and Saturdays apparently is meant to be optimum time for your posts. Um, and also it's really good for generating traffic um, to your website um, as well in each post. Very quickly going to talk about Facebook advertising. Okay, so as I said, only business accounts can advertise um, through ad manager. Um, there's an ad manager setting on our on a page, and you can create adverts from there. You can uh, upload ready-made content um, that you've already put together, or you can create an advert slideshow through ads manager. You can set a lifetime budget, which means, oh, I'm going to spend like 30 quid on this advert for this amount of time. Or you could do a daily budget like, oh, yeah, each day I want to spend 50 quid for this amount of time. You can change adverts throughout a campaign. So if it's not quite working, you can change it, which you can't do if, you know, if it's a print advert. That's that. It's done. You can change that. It's very targeted through Facebook information, which I'll go through in a very quick second as well. Um, and uh, you never see the full details of the individual that you're advertising to. You just see the kind of number of the group depending on their interests. And so you never see like personal information when you're doing a Facebook advert. It would only be if someone engaged with it that you could see a name, but you wouldn't be able to interact with them directly from a business page. And ads are reviewed by Facebook before they're published. Mike, if I run over time, do stop me. <laughs> I don't think we mind a bit. Okay, cool, so that's fine. If I head off for bed at about nine o'clock, you'll have to excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very nearly done, I swear. Okay, no, <laughs> please, no, no worries at all. Okay, so how specific can you target on a Facebook advert? And I'll tell you what, it's a little bit scary how targeted you can be. So you can target on gender and age. You can target on a geographical location. So you could actually drop a pin into a map um, for a particular area, or you could type in the name of a town and do a radius of an area to capture as many people in a location. You can target people's likes and interests. You can target their job title. You can even target their behavior. Like if they um, regularly shop online, you can find out that information. Um, and also their relationships, if they're a family, if they're married, if they're single. So that kind of links that relationship status. So depending on that information that you put in your about section, that might depend then on what adverts you see. So this is an advert I'm actually currently running for St. Elizabeth Hospice. And this is for the takeaway shop that we've got on Heath Road. So for this advert, I went very specific. So I actually made this advert um, through the ads manager and it's just a kind of slideshow video of the wonderful cakes that are on display. Um, and I just really wanted to show you like the audience and how specific it is. So with this, I did like pin drops um, of uh, the locations into the surrounding area of Heath Road. So very much East Ipswich. Um, and I also targeted people who are 18 to 65. Um, and their interest, you can see at the bottom there, coffee houses, Great British Bake Off, Costa, shopping, tea, charity, coffee, Starbucks, cake and bake. And then behaviours, I put in commuters because it's quite a commuter um, road. Um, lots of people going in and out of town. There's the hospital as well that people use. There's A14 very nearby um, and engaged shoppers. So people who regularly shop online. So that's how specific you can be in terms of an audience. I just wanted to show you that just so that you can kind of get more of an idea when you see an advert pop up on your feed and you'll know it's an advert because of this word here sponsored. That tells you it's an advert. So it might be if you've already liked St. Elizabeth Hospice and you're like, oh, that's interesting content. Like, oh, I'm seeing that ad back quite a lot. It's actually an advert. And that, that tells you that it's an ad. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to show you that just to give you a bit more of an understanding from your point of view when you go onto your feed. Equally, this is another advert that I did. 
This is more about our services in Great Yarmouth and Waverley for the hospice. And I just want to show you here a bit more about the job title. So this was very much about location. And we did radius uh, locations of Beckles, Bungie, um, Great Yarmouth. And then I looked at job titles in particular. And we want to target these professionals here so that they can then refer uh, patients to this service. So yeah, you can be incredibly targeted. And I mean, with this advert, I paid 30 quid for it and it's engaged with a lot of people. Um, and it, I can see that it's doing above average, which is great. So I'll be doing a review of that in the coming days because it will finish soon. So I just want to talk a little bit more context a bit about Facebook and its influence and controversy. And it kind of links with that Facebook advertising. So you probably read about Cambridge Analytica scandal that happened in 2016. Um, so data from Facebook was collected through an app that was created by Cambridge um, and which uh, Cambridge Analytica used uh, in 2013. And it was a series of questions to build psychological profiles on users. Um, and so they used uh, personal data from Facebook's open graph platform. So I think this was a few years, but I don't think this is available anymore because of this. Um, and Cambridge Analytica sought to sell that data to American voters uh, for the 2016 election. So you probably heard about that and how they could be incredibly targeted with that information. And it's where Facebook gets a little bit uh, like a bit of controversy around it. Um, because there's talk that they were hired uh, by the Leave EU and UKIP campaign uh, to convince people to support Brexit. Um, it can be so specific on adverts. I remember just looking at that Heathrow one that I did uh, for work, and you can you can literally pinpoint political views like liberal, right wing. You can be that specific, but um, they're cracking down more on adverts now. I noticed when I went onto their um, help center page for adverts that. Um, they're putting ad restrictions around the um, election, um, around the political campaign in the states, so they could. I could just add to that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that the um, program that I was talking about on Netflix um, is called the Social Dilemma. Ah, yes, uh, I've seen that recommended. Yeah, you must have a look because it really, you know, is very close to what you're talking about, particularly yeah. when it comes to the, the misuse. Of that kind of information i, I just thought I'd chuck it in whilst the movie was there <laughs> no that's really good i need to watch that i think it's not, i think i put it's, it on my list to watch it's pretty scary actually but uh, yeah it's very mad. good on the negative side but the positive side um, um very good yeah i'll definitely have a look at that i'll try and watch it before uh, next week which would be good um and actually speaking of uh, another recommended um uh, netflix shows the great hack um so if you want to know a little bit more about um the ins and outs of Facebook and how targeted it can be and about um, Cambridge Analytica and the election and data scandal. I recommend watching The Great Hack, which is on Netflix. Um, and it was only released last year. So uh, do take a look at that um, as well. Uh, that's it from me. I'm sorry if I've waffled on a bit. I realise I'm a little bit over time, but um, I'm very happy to take any more questions. I have a wee question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hi, Helena. Yeah. Hello. Um, over a Facebook page for a local church um, yep. usually just make um, posters and what have you to put on it get a lot of the friend requests I mean a lot of these are people from around the world I don't know them um, so I have to kind of look into their profiles um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of friend requests from uh, so-called people they're offered a bit more than friendship I don't know whether they're spoof things or what they're sexual um, things basically I was wondering, after hearing you talking, would I be better to um, have it as a page instead of a Facebook account? And if so, that would probably mean me um, closing down the account yeah. and yeah. launching a page. Yeah, I would definitely do a page or a group. Um, for that particular group if you're doing so you're doing it from a personal like profile account yes then. I took it yeah somebody opened it as a profile I've taken it over I've been doing it for a few years but it's getting a lot I get a lot of friends on there and like you say they're people I don't know because it's a public yeah. it's like being a public um thing and a lot of them are kosher but a lot of them I think they just sort of like targeting it with um, yeah no, I totally recommend um, doing, but I'd suggest maybe a group might be best, perhaps, because mm -hmm. you can still um, 
review who goes into that group if you still want to do that um you can either have it as a kind of public group that anyone can post in or it could be a bit more closed like someone has to request to join the group but it will function a lot better than a profile if you're having a page that's more public facing and anyone can like it and you don't have to worry about um accepting people to like the page at all um and you can just post um, interesting content and actually if you want to reach more people it's easier for people to share from pages um, so what I would do is either weigh up the options if you want I'm very happy to like help you if um, you need contact details to ask more questions um, but yeah I'd set up either a page or a group and then just when you've got that set up go back onto that particular profile say you're going to be closing it and if people want to find out more they need to like this page or this group and be a part of that this this account is no longer used and then you can remove that and that can become a redundant account um so yeah i definitely do a page or a group it just kind of depends on how big a pool of people you want to keep in contact with and if it's quite a closed group or if it, you want it to be more public and share with more people so yeah uh, would i need to you um have another um email address uh, no, you shouldn't do. No, you can make a profile or a group from your own profile, and, and, and you can also, <laughs> yeah. And if, um, say, you've got um, like two of you are going to run that page, you can make them an admin. So you could set up the page, and then you can go and you can add someone as an admin, so they can also post. Um, yeah. So it's not just you doing it. Um, and equally, if you then came out of that role and you changed role and you didn't want to be part of that you can be removed from that and someone else can take that over and you wouldn't receive those notifications so that's oh, exactly that yeah I so that if it's a page yeah yeah you can do that as a page yeah yeah um so that's what i did when i changed jobs because i was obviously posting from the eastern angles account and then i had to move over to a new account with my new job and we've got like four people that have got access to post on that as well so um yeah that's quite a useful tool to have Excellent. does that answer your questions okay yes it has thank okay, you good. yes yes because i was thinking of changing it and now i will <laughs> okay great <laughs> oh, thank you no problem thank i've you, got one, one small question about um your list of friends i think when you were talking about that you said it was possible to hide yes friends so that other people didn't know that you were friends with Hitler or somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump. Um, can you do that on an individual basis or is it all or nothing? Do you hide all, all your it, friends? Yeah. Hmm? yeah. Yeah, it's all or nothing. So you can, okay. yeah, you can either have absolutely no friends can be seen or you can yeah. have mutual friends can be seen. So let's say I went onto your profile, I might be able to see all the mutual friends but really it is all nothing you can't pick and choose okay yeah. yeah thanks that's all right can i just share a little story about facebook advertising yeah so uh, some of you people know that you know a very good friend of ours owns a very lovely picture framing shop uh, in ipswich and next door to it is a little shop owned and run by a polish immigrant who basically just does uh, needlework. She does repairs and, you know, so she spends her life tucking trousers and legs up because they're too long and widening waists, I suspect, rather a lot these days with us all in lockdown. Um, and when it was announced that we were going to go back into a second lockdown, by chance, our friend who owned the picture framing shop called in to see her because she'd taken a parcel in for him. And she said, um, I have no work. I have absolutely no work at all. And I do not think when we come out of lockdown that I will be occupying these premises anymore. And um, and she was lovely, absolutely lovely lady. And Owen, our friend said, well, have you done any social media advertising? And she said, oh, no, no, I, you know, I don't do that sort of thing. So Owen took it upon himself to launch some Facebook ads specifically, specifically for her, uh, talk to her at length about her kind of target audience. And over the space of just three or four days and at a cost of literally less than 50 pounds, she had more people queuing at her door than she could cope with. That's brilliant. Absolutely that's the, that's the power phenomenal. of the platform. Absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. 
it is amazing how targeted you can be um and for like you say for a very small amount of money like it costs so much money to do like print advertising yeah. like for print advertising you could be paying like you know 300 pounds or something and you might actually not know how trackable that is so you know you might just know the readership but you don't know who, how many people did the call to action unless you've got a specific link for that particular group whereas with facebook advertising you can see direct links you can see how well something's performing how many people are engaging with it you know you get results straight away and it's why a lot of businesses use it um, and probably why my feed is full of facebook adverts half the time <laughs> <laughs> how are we doing it's it's nine o'clock ladies and gents i think we probably ought to um Call that's my session next week so if anybody's interested yeah. in um twitter and i will probably actually do a proper live um feed of setting up a profile um just to actually show you how to do it um and talk about instagram as, as well as uh, a few other platforms too so yeah i don't know thank you um thank this has been brilliant actually for me and i 